So my first question is, I guess this could be titled, Is Love Blind? Has anybody heard that? Love is blind? Yes. Really interesting, isn't it? So is love blind? So we're going to answer that question today. So I asked the children, or anybody can answer, but I would like them to give an, um, answers, is I would like an example of when you have felt at school or with family or anything, where you feel really uh, that somebody really loves you. Maybe something happened that didn't go well and the, you were forgiven, you felt loved. Or maybe you were really recognized. Does anybody have a... I'll, I'll give an example. Now this is for me, I was at work. And I wasn't doing my job because of a very, very stressful thing that happened. And the man who was my boss very gently took me aside and said, I think you don't understand that the stress that you are under is causing you not to be able to concentrate on your job. And then gave an example of how he, it happened to him where he wasn't concentrating on his job and got sidetracked. And then just brought it to me. He didn't yell at me. He didn't tell me I was wrong. He related it to himself. And that was a long time ago, <laughs> about over 30 years ago. And I always remember because that was, I felt loved by that person. Anybody got any examples? Just a second. Uh, uh, is it okay if I don't let this answer right Well, now? just just a second. <coughs> What about at school? School's kind of hard. A lot of times we don't feel loved at school, do we? Anybody? Nobody's felt loved. You don't have to go to school. Yes, Shelby. I was basically adopted this one time. That was pretty cool. <laughs> you were basically adopted? Yeah. Oh, okay. And that was, you felt pretty loved? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Okay. Good. Anyone else? Okay, Robert, we'll let you go, and these guys can think. Okay, uh, and a rather striking example, it wasn't happening to me, but there's a, a wealthy businessman who had to rush to get on a train, and he didn't have a pencil, and he, he saw a man selling, a, a beggar, selling pencils, and so he bought one, and then he, then he told the man, he said, you know, uh, you're a businessman like me, you got good, good, uh, good prices for your pencils, and because he told him he was a businessman, not a beggar, but a businessman. Two, three months later, he met at a convention. The same man said, do you remember me? He said, I'm the man that sold you the pencils, and you called me a businessman, and that's what I am now. Oh, that yeah. is an act of love. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, at treatment. Um, when we go down to have our cigarettes, everybody always gets out of the chair that I always sit in. And for some reason, the girls have taught the new girls coming in. And I feel like it's, it's just this shining respect, like that's Judy's chair. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta yeah. get out of it. Even though I wanna quit smoking and everything, you know, it just, it just feels so, like, respectful. Yeah, they recognize and, you, and, and that you have they, a place. Yeah, they recognize me and <coughs> teaching the new girls to, uh, to do that to me, too. And I'm like, you guys, come on. I'm not supposed <laughs> to have a chair here. It's not, it's not my chair, and, but... You know, they'll say, oh, I warmed it up for you. And like, okay. they hop right out. There's a few of them that don't. Oh, okay. And some but of them do. Most of them do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Boy, oh boy, we need to have more acts of love that we remember, don't we? Okay. Yes. Well, I came here after a crisis in my life and received some love, so that was good. Yes. I'm alive today for that. You're alive today for that, absolutely. Yes. Well. I remember when I was really discouraged when I wrote the we wrote the first book, Why Didn't God Heal Me? 
and it looked like people didn't want to be healed because it wasn't selling at all, and I didn't feel like an author. And I, I was sitting here in the, being counseled by Gerald, and he mentioned all the people who had told him how they read the book and been blessed by it. Yeah, and he felt loved. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I have a question. Yes, Shelley. Well, the, in the position that I was previously working for, and then the new job that I have now, the people there, um, they respected me before and they appreciated my talent, but now that I'm gone, they appreciated it a whole lot more. <laughs> So that makes you feel loved and appreciated. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll tell you a little story. When I was in grade five, I was standing outside. It was winter time, and there was this hill outside of school. And what would happen was, I don't know, we'd take cardboard or I don't know if we had crazy carpets or whatever, and we would or just slide on our snowsuits down the hill. And I'm standing at the top of the hill, and all of a sudden, this person comes along and my feet go out from under me and I go all the way down the hill oh, and I open my eyes with this person wrapping their arms around me and it was Roland Sunshine and he had a lot of brothers and sisters in school and they teased me for the rest of the year and his sister was in grade 8, one of them and she comes up and says, my brother really loves you. And I'm like, if this is love, I don't want it. <laughs> so was that love? No. So what about at school? Do you have people at school or people you know that say they love each other? Mark says all the time people use that word too much. Is that what he says? Yes, even on the TV he says, uh, he even... Um, he, oh, there was one boy, he was on the computer, and he was saying, oh, I love this. And he's like, well, are you going to marry him? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, if I could, I would. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think Carissa and Sarah show a lot of love in the way they do the mind, better than Mr. Beam, Beam would do his mind when they do the songs. Mm -hmm. And yes. they hug each other. It's very... <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So now, what's, what do you guys think, in order to love somebody, right? To feel loved, what do you need for that? You need to be kind to others, and you need, you need to not do it all. Well, what if I was really kind to you, Sarah, and I asked, I'm at school, I'm really kind, I come up and I say, Oh, Sarah, can I please have, borrow your pencil? Would you give it to me? Would you give me the pencil to use? Okay, so now I use the pencil, but I don't give it back to you, because I forget. Oh, we have an unforgiveness problem, I think, at this point. <laughs> she doesn't look very kind at this point, or what? Hey, okay, note to everyone, give Sarah her pencil back. Okay, so now I come up to you again, and I say, yeah, I see you have a good, really good lunch. And so, I like your chocolate bar that's in your lunch. So I ask you if I can have a piece of it. Would you give me a piece of it? Okay, so then I take that, but the next day I come back and I see something else in your lunch that I would like. But I'm really kind to you. And I, I just say, oh, Sarah, you're just so pretty, and I would like to have another piece of your lunch. And I do this all the time. Am I loving you? No. What am I trying to do? You're trying to get stuff from me. Right. I, I'm looking at what you have and I want it, right? But do I love you? No. Why not? Oh, your stuff's great. What am I doing? What would I be doing? <coughs> Loving her stuff, right? Yeah. So I just, uh, yeah, using her, right? Manipulation. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, right? Or what if somebody decided that Carissa, she's out, and she's doing things, she's in an organization, she's doing stuff, and somebody wants to hang around her because she knows everybody. And if you know Carissa, then you get to be friends with everybody. Do they love you, Carissa? No. No. What are they doing? 
they're trying to use me as a friend to get to other people, and they're actually being rude. Yeah, they're using. Yeah, that. they're being rude, right? And they're just using you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, Aaliyah, at school, do you see people at school that do that to each other? Um, not, not really. Are they pretty good? Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good to each other. Yeah. How how do the boys treat the girls? Uh, well. This is where we laugh a lot. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I guess. Well, they kind of do. I don't know. Do they call them names? No, but sometimes the girls try to chase them. Oh, the girls chase the boys. <laughs> yeah, to get away. <laughs> my brother my mom and dad got upset with him because he would come home and his clothes were ripped and my mom said why are your clothes ripped all the time what are you doing he goes mom the girls chased me and they grabbed my clothes because he was a little cutie <laughs> and they would grab his clothes and my mom actually had to go to the school and ask them to talk to her girl's mother to get her to quit attacking my brother and he was in grade I don't know four <laughs> Or five, yes. Because they, thought, yeah, exactly. Oh. Okay, now, so. Are girls supposed to chase boys? Are girls supposed to chase boys? No. <laughs> no. I'm just asking the children. Oh, you're asking them, should boys, yeah, girls chase the boys? They, yeah, they were chasing, chasing them away. Oh, you were chasing them away. Because it's just, they they bother us a They lot. bother you, they tease you? Annoy us. They annoy you. Okay. Well, there's a couple things that happen, and uh, this this weekend, the reason I wanted to mention to you, and you guys obviously know from if, if you've been at school or you watch TV or you've been to a store, you know that this weekend there's this holiday, and you know what the holiday Valentine's. is, Valentine's Day, and it is named Valentine's Day right now in 2016, but it wasn't always named that. And not everybody who's celebrating this weekend in Edmonton is necessarily celebrating Valentine's Day the way we think of it. So now, what do your people you know, what do they say about Valentine's Day? Yes? They say that it's just a day to show your affection to other people. Just a day to show your affection to other people. Okay, Sarah? It's, they say that it's a day to, like, give love to friends, like best friends or something? Give love to best friends. Note that. You give love to best friends. Not anybody else. <laughs> Just best friends. That's interesting. Okay. Um, and also, uh, well, I guess, meters, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, they were, um, uh, try, like, uh, <laughs> Do they give roses? Yes. Yeah. yeah. They like, um, they give boys boys girlfriend and boyfriend. Girlfriend and boyfriend. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does sound interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell by the way they giggle that they know exactly what's going on, right? Okay, so, see? I don't know what to say Okay, so... What they're giggling about is exactly what the day is about, actually. And it has nothing to do with love. And that is the truth. Now, what is the symbols, though, of Valentine's Day? When you think of Valentine's Day, yes? Um, it's like a red heart. A red heart, okay. A yes, red. Sarah? A pink heart. A pink heart, okay. <laughs> There's something else. Oh, yes, Jasmine? Cupid. Cupid. Okay, Shelly? Oh, okay. <laughs> and she knew it. Okay. So Cupid, okay, and what does Cupid have? Yes? Oh, we're there out. Oh, <laughs> sorry. We have a competition going back here. We have some strife and some envy, maybe. <laughs> okay. So uh, an arrow. That's right. Okay. So it's very interesting because this is where you'll see Cupid and he'll have his eyes covered because they say... Love is blind. Yes, go ahead. And uh, also, sometimes uh, the, I'm like, instead of like just a like an arrow, arrow, it's like a, 
It's like a heart, but a it's heart. upside down heart. An upside down heart. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And yes. Isn't it when they shoot someone, like when they shoot someone, like yeah, another person falls in love with them? I yes, that's they, yes. You yeah. shoot the arrow, right? Okay. So the mention of Cupid. Typically, you get this little cherub, chubby little baby with wings, right? Who's an infant, and he's got a bow and an arrow. But that's not always the case. That's not the way it used to be, because long before the Romans adopted and renamed him Cupid, he was known as to the Greeks as Eros, the god of love. Now, Eros, uh, one of the first authors to mention Eros, was in about 700 BC. And it was Hesoid, H-E-S-I-O-D, who was uh, described as a uh, primeval, cos uh, cosmogenic deity born to the world egg. And so if you go back to Ishtar at Easter, you'll see this great big egg that supposedly the earth started with, but the egg was on earth. Like, that doesn't make sense. But anyway, there's this egg. And so... He was actually, when you read the description of him in several places, is what the Bible mentions of the Nephilim, because he mated with a woman on earth. He was a god and mated with a woman on earth. And he is, to, like Eros is, to be of the lineage of Aphrodite, um, Isis, well, Aphrodite and Zeus, I guess. So he's armed with a bow and a quiver filled with both golden arrows, to arouse desire, and leaden arrows to ignite aversion. Arrows struck at the hearts of gods and mortals and played with their emotions. Do you like when people play with your emotions? No. No, no. that's not love? That's so gentle no. Oh, you haven't got to high school yet. Oh. You'll really like it when you get there. <laughs> There's lots of people that will play with your emotions. And you'll, you'll just think, oh, I'm loved. In one story from ancient Greek mythology, which was later retold by Roman authors, Cupid, or Eros, shot a golden arrow at Apollo, who fell madly in love with the nymph Daphne, but then launched a leaden arrow at Daphne so she would be repulsed by him. So it's playing with people's emotions. It's to do with lust, not love. In another allegory, Cupid's mother, Venus, Aphrodite, became a je so jealous of the beautiful mortal uh, Psyche that she told her son to induce Psyche to fall in love with a monster. Now that's playing with your life, isn't it? Instead, Cupid became so enamored with Psyche that he married her, with the condition that she would never see his face. Eventually, Psyche's curiosity got the better of her, and she stole a glance, causing Cupid to flee in anger. Hmm. So, when lusts are not fulfilled, anger comes. Very angry. After roaming the known world in search of her lover, Psyche was eventually reunited with Cupid and granted the gift of immortality. So, when the person doesn't answer the lusts of the other person, they will come up and say, Oh, I love you, I love you, especially in high school. I love you, I love you, I love you. And really, what happens is, if you don't reciprocate that, then what they will try to do is diminish you. Because lust, when it's not fulfilled, will want to diminish the other person, and then they become very angry with that person. So, I don't know if anybody who's been in high school, and there's a lot of us, want to give an example of that. Does anybody Never know? Happened. What? <laughs> Never <it>? happened. <laughs> Never happened? You didn't tell anyone you loved them? They never told me either. And they never told you either. Yeah, oh. Back then, well, aren't you blessed, Hugh? You didn't I have am, to do that. I am free of all of that. Yeah. <laughs> See, lots of stuff you didn't have to lay down. Because what they want to do is diminish the person if you don't reciprocate what they think, reciprocate their lust and answer to it and fall under their spell, basically, then they diminish you. So they'll tell people, they'll call people names. Uh, they'll spread rumors about you, those kinds of things. And they'll be very angry with you. So they won't talk to you, or, you know, before they would be oh so friendly and come up and chat to you all the time. 
<laughs> you know, I'm not looking at anyone in particular. But, you know, they all chat to you and talk to you, but, and they walked you home every day from okay, school. That's just right and, and all of a sudden, they're nowhere to be found. Because it wasn't love, right? It's just lost. So there's a festival that goes on over these three days, and it's called La Perna Kelia. It actually happens between February, oh, this weekend, 13 to 14, 15, 16, about three days. And it's from a very pagan ancient past. And it happens in Edmonton. And it says, come and join us for kinky fun. Now, does that sound like love? No. So, what they do is they have a celebration of the ancient Roman festival. It's a weekend of fetish and fun with a taste of ancient Rome. They tell you to mark it on your calendar. I think you should mark it on your prayer list calendar. <laughs> they feature keynote speakers, interactive workshops, vendor marketplace, dinners, and three play parties. And social events for adults interested in the erotic and alternative lifestyles. So, what happens is God, why does God tell us to have no part of the pagan world at all? Because of erotic and whatever you said. <laughs> because of whatever you said. <laughs> Reversion. Well, the reason he doesn't want us to have a little bit of all at all, he doesn't want us to have any of it at all, is because, okay, let's say today, I didn't do this, but maybe I'll have to do this. If I would have made cinnamon buns and brought them, there's a lot of dough. I'd have four pans of cinnamon buns, but I would have only put in one tablespoon of yeast for all that. So what happens is, is when you have a little bit of yeast, a little bit of leavening, a little bit of sin, it starts to get more and more and more. So this celebration that they have in Edmonton is about, I'm going to say, 17 years old now. So pre-17 years ago, they probably weren't doing that here. Maybe somebody was, but it wasn't advertised like it is now, right? Well, 20 years before that, they weren't doing a lot of things either. When it was Valentine's <coughs> Day at my school, it was no big deal. You might have got a card to somebody, but you didn't necessarily give a lot of things or have a lot of candy or do all that kind of stuff. But over the centuries, they just start putting it in, putting it in. Now, uh, La, La, oh, what are we here? La Percalia is St. Valentine's Day can be traced back to this ancient Roman festival of sexual license. This purification and fertility festival that seems to have been uniquely Roman, there is no other Indo-European equivalent in other, like Indonesia or Ireland or Scandinavian countries. Its origin has been lost to us, although it might have been associated with protection from wolves. Even the pagan Romans in the first century had forgotten its source. And it goes back to, um, it was, February was considered the final month of the Roman year, and on the 15th, citizens celebrated this festival. Originally, this week-long party honored the god of Faunus, who watched over shepherds in the hills. The festival also marked the coming of spring. Later on, it became a holiday honoring Romulus and Remus, the twins who founded Rome after being raised by a she-wolf in a cave. So then, and then it gets even more twisted. You know, they just keep adding and adding to it. So what they would do to kick off the festivities, an order of priests gathered before the uh, Le, uh, Le Kale on Palestine Hill, the sacred cave in which Romulus and Remus were nursed by their wolf mother. The priests then sacrificed a dog for purification and a pair of young male goats for fertility. The hides of the goats were cut into strips, dipped in blood, and taken around the streets of Rome. These bits of hide were touched to both fields and women. And when it says touched to women, uh, it was like a whip, and they would hit you. You have it there? Yes. Oh, good. She's got it. She's doing good. Thank you. Um, 
and they would hit, hit the women as a way of encouraging fertility in the coming year. <laughs> That's loving, isn't it? Yeah. Never thought of that. <laughs> That's pretty loving, hey? Hey, honey, let's have some children. <laughs> I'll just whip you and you'll have children. Girls and young women would line up on their route to receive lashes from these whips. There's a theory that this tradition may have survived in the form of a certain ritual, Easter Monday whippings. That all goes together with Ishtar. That's what that is? Okay. There's another one. Okay, after the priest concluded the fertility rites, young women placed their names in a jar and men drew their names in order to choose a partner for the rest of the celebrations. Not unlike later customs of entering names into the Valentine lottery. So, that was one of the things that they did. It's also related to the festival of February, which was the goddess of the fever of love, which is really the fever of lust. It's that when lust just takes over a person, and you have that fever of lust in ancient pagan Rome. Uh, she was also the goddess of women and of marriage, and her festival date was February 14th. At that time, a box was provided from which single men would draw a billet, a small piece of paper on which a woman's name was written. The couple would then form a temporary liaison for the erotic games to follow. They would remain partners for the following 12 months. Sometimes marriages resulted from this practice. The church was opposed to this. And the reason they did this was they didn't want the men to be married because then they wouldn't be in the army, because then they'd have children and they wouldn't want to die because they loved their children. And so they discouraged people being married. So they would do this little thing, I guess, to make up for that. Um, and then eventually what happened was the church was opposed to this display of open eroticism and sensuality and they tried several times and various ways of changing this festival. They didn't like it. And in 40, or 494 there was a pope who renamed a cleanup festival the Feast of the Purification of the Virgin Mary and the date was later changed to February 2nd and it's now called the Presentation of the Lord. This recognizes a time, well, it says when it recognizes a time, but that's not what it's about anyway. Um, so now, Valentine's Day, who is Saint Valentine? Well, Saint Valentine, believe it or not, they don't know who he was. And one source claims that there are as many as seven Valentines, Saint Valentines. So this is not one person. So uh, one was a bishop that was martyred in 271. One was a priest in Rome who married couples in secret. And uh, the Emperor Claudius II had previously cancelled all men marriages in the city in order to encourage more men to join the military. So uh, according to that story, he was there was a valentine that was caught and executed on February 14th in the year 270, or perhaps 269. Then there was a Roman priest who claimed that the Roman gods Jupiter and Mercury were shameless and contemptible <laughs> characters, and he was arrested, beaten, beheaded, but not before he befriended the blind daughter of the jailer and restored her sight. And then there was a Christian who lived in Africa. So there is no Saint Valentine as in one person. Yes? Some of the research I did uh, right back to Nimrod was the first Valentine. Well, yes, and that, that is exactly, because when we first started out here, you could, you could tell that it was Nimrod, because uh, it says who the mother was and who his relations were, was Af like Ishtar, right, Isis and all those, so it was Nimrod. Who was, he had a bow and arrow, he was a hunter. Yeah, and he was a hunter of men, right? So same thing, yes, Linda? The uh, the heart that they call the heart it yeah. isn't actually the heart is not our hearts are not heart shaped the uterus is heart shaped yeah uh, and oh, that's what it comes from it comes that's from the sexual organs yes. yeah that's why yeah exactly so uh, to the Romans Lepernicalia uh, was a monumental event each year when Mark Antony was the master of the Lepercy College of Priests. He chose the festival of Lepercalia in 44 BC as the time to offer the crown to Julius Caesar. So that was kind of an interesting thing. So, is love blind? Is love blind? 
Is God blind? No. So love is not blind because God is love. Love. Real love. Absolutely. And that's how you know that love is not blind. If you are going into a situation where you think love is blind, or somebody says, oh, I married that person because love is blind, they did not go into it, that union, with God. Because actually, when you love people properly, what does love give you? Clear insight. Clear insight, which is wisdom. I thought it was goosebumps. No, it gives you wisdom. <laughs> Go have therapy for Hugh later. <laughs> uh, a few things are adding up there, Hugh. Anyway, um, yeah, it, it's love is not blind. It, the more you love, the more wisdom and discernment you gain. So when you have wisdom and discernment, you can, when you have love and you have that wisdom and discernment, you know when somebody is not loving you and where they just want to take from you. That starts to develop. Yes, Joyce? And love is fulfilling. When you serve and do something in love, you have a, a satisfaction or a joy that nothing else can replace. Yes, but people who are in lust would not be able to understand no, that. No. They just wouldn't. They just, lust is a, um, you can't you can't you can't fill lust. It's unfillable, right? So love you would feel fulfilled, like you'd have a peace. Yes. Sorry, Robert. Yes. Yes. Uh, there's a, we talked about the boy girl dynamic, and I'm not sure all of the truth is dynamic. There's a song that says, "A boy chases a girl until she catches him." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes, they like to place the blame, don't they? <laughs> On the girl. She just chased me and that was it. I couldn't do anything. So, okay, any other questions? Does that help a little bit? A little bit? So that's why when you receive food on Valentine's Day, actually in the communion, we should probably break off all covenants to, all false covenants. In any covenant meals, like eating chocolates and love potions, love yeah. potions yes. and all that kind of stuff, especially love potions and stuff for Valentine's Day. Very easy to get that. That can just happen. So, so anyway, just thought we'd remind everybody and refresh that in our minds that uh, this is a weekend. And I, I'm very thankful for everybody on the prayer call who's been praying for all the youth and everybody that we walk in the love of Jesus.